previously went over hypothetical compound propositions. To refresh your memory, hypothetical compound propositions are a type of compound proposition in which two subpropositions are linked through the hypothesis that the truth of the first proposition implies the truth of the second. The form of this proposition is if P then Q. For example, if it snows in New York, then the temperature in New York is less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. From here, we can derive two new terms. The first is the antecedent. The antecedent is the initial proposition of the pair, which appears in the hypothetical. In the above example, the antecedent would be it snows in New York. Then there's a consequent. The consequent is the final proposition of the pair, which appears in the hypothetical. In the above example, the consequent would be the temperature in New York is less than 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Our knowledge of the hypothetical informs us that the truth of P implies the truth of Q. This being the case, from here we can derive two key rules of inference. First, if P is true, then Q is true as well, due to the fact that the hypothetical links the truth of P to that of Q. On the other hand, if Q isn't true, since we know the truth of P ensures the truth of Q, then we too know that P can't be true. The first of these is called modus ponens, and the second is called modus tollens. Let's explore them further. Modus ponens, a rule of inference which states that if we know a hypothetical, if P then Q is true, and we know the antecedent P is true, then we can infer the truth of the consequent Q. In variable notation, the rule appears in the form 1, if P then Q, 2, P, 3, therefore Q. Then there's modus tollens. It's a rule of inference which states that if we know a hypothetical if P then Q is true, and we know the consequent Q is false, then we can infer that the antecedent P is also false. In the variable notation, the rule appears in the form if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. Within the following section, we will be looking through a couple of examples depicting uses of modus ponens and modus tollens. See if you can identify the hypothetical compound proposition and determine which portion is the antecedent and which part is a consequent. Suppose I know that if my dog sees a squirrel, then it will chase that squirrel. Now suppose that I can see that my dog is looking at a squirrel. I will infer from this that my dog will chase a squirrel. This inference is an example of modus ponens. Suppose that if you know for a fact that if someone falls asleep with a lit candle, then the room will catch on fire. Next, suppose you hear from your parents that your distant cousin fell asleep with her candle still lit. Then, using modus ponens, you might rightly conclude that your cousin has burnt down their room. Modus tollens. As from before, suppose that I know that if my dog sees a squirrel, then it will chase that squirrel. Now suppose that I know that my dog has not chased any squirrels today. I will infer from this that my dog hasn't seen any squirrels today. This inference is an example of modus tollens. Suppose again you know that if someone falls asleep with a lit candle, their room will catch fire. Suppose you visit your cousin one morning and see that his room is in perfect condition. Then through modus tollens, as you know that the room did not burn down, you know that they did not fall asleep with a lit candle. In conclusion, Often in general debate, not just in logic, conditional statements are utilized, as the rules of modus ponens and modus tollens both can be used to provide valid arguments based on the supposition of a conditional. They are both incredibly useful within any form of argumentation or debate. In this lesson, we went over both of these rules in detail, so that in the future, when conditional statements are used around you, you will have the tools to determine which conclusions can be drawn based on the statements.